Hello everyone. So, today I am here to discuss the topic of investigational use of drugs part number 2. In this topic, we will discuss about what are the clinical phases and the trials and also about what are the other uh, rules, regulations followed in this investigational use of drugs. So, let us start one by one. First, there is a topic of role of pharmacist in clinical evaluation of the drugs. So, in this topic, we will cover that how the pharmacists are playing a role in the evaluation of drugs. So, they are assisting in the development of the protocol and these protocols are formed for the clinical research of drugs. So, whatever the drugs are in the part of clinical research, the protocols are prepared and these protocols are prepared by the team members and in this team members, pharmacists are playing a key role and the control of double blind test studies as the procedures of the clinical trial, they are double blinded means physicians as well as patient do not know about the treatment, whatever the treatment is given to the patient, actually physician as well as patient do not know about it, it is called as a double blinded test studies. This is first point, how they are assisting, they are assisting in the protocol for the formation of protocol. Point number two, they also are responsible to the institution, means where the clinical research is performed and the principal investigator for seeing that procedures means what do you mean by the principal investigators means who is responsible mainly for the results of the study who is mainly participating in the study who is uh, uh, who is doing the trial who is doing the experiment they are the principal investigators so pharmacists are also responsible to the institution as well as for the principal investigators for seeing the procedures, whatever the procedures performed in the clinical trials for the investigational use of drugs, for the control of investigational drug. I told you for the control of drugs which are being tested. Now, what are the guidelines for pharmacists? So, there are some of the guidelines which is given for when a pharmacist will do or participate in the investigational research, investigational drug use. So, what are the guidelines? See, point number one, pharmacist, a copy, how, how they, they are giving the, uh, uh, they are playing a good role. So, point number one, a copy of the approved research protocol should be kept in the pharmacy. This is the guideline number one. Guideline number two, they are using the protocol and additional information supplied by the principal investigator. So, whatever the information which is provided by the principal investigator, they are uh, using it and they are making the protocols and they are adding the extra information, they are providing it to the other members, to the other uh, uh, members who are working in the hospitals and also help in the research in the awareness in the education and training programs. Now, pharmacists are also preparing one of the sheet, one of the form which is called as investigational drug data sheet. What, what, what is the information in the investigational drug data sheet? It includes drug name, its common synonyms, the dosage form means the capsules, tablet, injection like this. What is the strength? It could be, I am just taking an example, 2 mg per ml like this. So, strength should be mentioned. Usual dosage for the therapeutic application means if they are treating any of the disease, what is the usual dosage? What is the therapeutic range for it? And also the route of administration means either it is oral, either it is topical or by IV like this. So, this information should included in the investigational drug data sheet 
what other information is about the indication means a drug is used to treat diabetes the drug is used to treat hypertension or any of the disease so indication should be mentioned what is the expected therapeutic effect any of the drug can be used to treat uh, used to uh, reduce the glucose level it can be used to reduce the pain also yes so like this what are the expected therapeutic effect another what is the toxicity is with the, uh, uh, related with a drug which is used as a investigational drug use and what are the treatment if any toxicity occurs what are the management procedures so if these all information should be mentioned in the investigational drug data sheet which is also provided by the pharmacist what other thing are as a guidelines for pharmacists point number 3 investigational drug supply should be kept in the pharmacy any new drug which is used as a investigational drug it should be kept in the pharmacy only and if it is supplied it is supplied by the pharmacy only everything any um, record related with the supplies means whatever the amount received whatever the quantity given to the patient and what is the returned amount how it is discarded so there are methods for the discard also it is uh, it th this information is mentioned by the ph pharmacist only point number 4 the dispensing of investigational drug should be integrated with packaging because they are the new drugs uh, they are for the testing only not for the prescription purpose so the packaging should be monitored properly packaging should be uh, taken care labeling should be there profile maintenance should be there and how it is delivered so these points should taken care why we are using the investigational drugs point number 5 patient education as i told you before in the previous slide pharmacists are involved in the investigational drug use so they are also uh, they are also aware about what are the new drugs how they are being tested and what are the new uh, things uh, monitored in it as the therapeutic uses content indication side effects what is new in it so they are also giving the patient education they are monitoring the therapy are the two clinical functions which are particularly important and applicable to investigational drugs in that way pharmacists are also participating in uh, spreading awareness about uh, these all new drugs and they are also participating in educational and training programs in that way the pharmacists are working in the investigational drug use other thing at the conclusion of this study the pharmacy should return unused drugs in the previous of the points i discussed about it whatever the quantity received whatever amount is given to the patient and what is the returned amount so everything is noted while doing the clinical research on any of the drug another is the pharmacy should prepare for the institution administrator and annual or semi annual statistical summary of the investiga investigational drug use of course whatever the testing is being performed it is very important to maintain a statistical summary because we have to evaluate some results from this yes another point is drug cost is also one of the point and other expenses which is associated with investigation investigational drug studies should be properly allocated and reimbursed which is called as sponsoring of the study so this is also taken care while performing any of the clinical study clinical research of course on the investigational use of drugs and how the pharmacists are working for it another is the clinical investigation now we we'll understand what is the clinical investigation what are the phases in it so let's start with our definition of the clinical investigation the kind and extent of investigational drug test means any of the new drug we are testing here so they are crucial to producing the substantial scientific evidence 
and there are different different phases for it. One is the preclinic preclinical study. Another is the clinical study. And also in the clinical study there are different different phases. Phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 and phase in the preclinical study, what happens? The drug is tested on the animals first. Whatever the results are taken from the animal study, it is undergone in the clinical study, means study on the human. So, any new drug, when it is tested on the animals, it will go on the humans, which is the part of the clinical study or clinical investigation. In the clinical in investigation, there are other different studies, the phase number 1, phase number 2, phase number 3, phase number 4. We will do it one by one. What are these phases? How they are different with each other? So, let us start with the phase number 1. They all are on the scientific evidence. There is no such thing as a verbal. Everything is written and everything is documented, which I am calling as scientific evidence or based on the scientific evidence of safety and effectiveness. So, let us start with the phase number 1. What happens in the phase number 1? The new drug is tested for the toxicity. In the phase number 1, we are just taking care about the toxi uh, toxicity profile. What is the metabolism excretion elimination? Means, we are getting the data of pharmacokinetic profile. How the drug is behaving in the body, the pharmacokinetic profile of the drug, absorption, distribution, metabolism, expression and the toxicity, safety profile of the drug. In the phase number 2, what we are getting, uh, this, uh, this phase is basically on the patients. So, we are taking the patients and giving the drug to the patient, try to find out the effectiveness of the drug. This is called as a phase number 2. In the phase number 3, we are increasing the number of patients and find out the safety and efficacy. And in the phase number 4, when drug is tested on many of the patients, it is launched in the market. And in the phase number 4, we are testing the drug after the launch of drug in the market, which is called as a post-marketing surveillance. So, there is another name for the phase number 4, which is called as a post-marketing surveillance. Now, we will do in elaborate manner, what is the phase, uh, phase first trial? Phase first trial, I told you, we are trying to know is the pharmacokinetic profile, means the absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion. What we are doing here is the phase number 1 trial, they are the first studies means we are doing the clinical trial and in a clinical trial in the phase number 1, we have taken drugs, we have taken any of the new drug which we want to uh, test. So, in this we are taking the voluntary participant, who are the voluntary participant? Of course, they are the healthy, healthy people, yes. So, Phase first trials are being first studies of the investigational new drug in humans. Yes, because they are the clinical investigation, part of clinical investigation. So, they will be on humans and they are all are healthy people. They are usually being conducted in healthy volunteers, I told you, between 20 to 80 participants. So, their number is 20 to 80 and what we are getting? These all three points. Make preliminary determination of the drug safety in humans. We are finding the safety, we are finding the side effects, yes, and safe therapeutic or healing dose range. So, these three, four points we can, uh, we can identify from the phase number one trial. Once the drug passed from the phase number one trial, it will move in the phase number two trial. So, what happens here in the phase two trial, who is the participant? Participants are the patients. As in the phase number 1 trial, who are the participants? The participants are the healthy, uh, 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 healthy, uh, healthy consumers. So, in the phase 2 trial, it is larger because the number of patients is more than the phase number 1 trial, but still relatively small because usually involving no more than several hundred participants. So, the number could be here in the phase number 2 trials, the number could be 
in 100 and who are the participants? Participants are the patients here. What we are getting the data? We are getting the data of the effectiveness, drug effectiveness in treating or preventing the disease because we are taking the patients, of course the patients are, if we want to form any drug for the hypertension, the patients are hypertensive patients, means the patients with a blood pressure problem who blood uh, hypertensive patients are taken for the uh, trial if we want the drug for the hypertension. So, similarly for the others also determine the optimal dosing of the drug. In this the first point I told you effectiveness another is the dosage range. Yes. So, effectiveness could be 100 to 500 mg. Yes, another example could be for another drug in a same manner. Determine the common short term side effects. So, we are seeing the patients after giving the drug, whatever the side effects are coming or related with the drug and what are the risk factors associated with it. If the risk factors overweighs with a benefit, so at that time will not proceed with the phase number 3. In the phase 3 trial, what happens as I have mentioned in the phase number 2 trial, the volunteers are the patients. Similarly, in the phase number 3 trial, the volunteers are also patients, but the number is increased here. So, uh, in this trial, the patients are in the thousands. Yes. So, we are taking the patient in thousands. Phase 3 trials are designed together. If a trial pass from the phase number 2 will move in the phase number 3 trial. Here we gather information. What is the information? Drug safety. Effectiveness of the drug. Yes. To evaluate whether its benefits overweigh its risk. I told you if benefits are more than the risk, then only will pass the drug. Otherwise, will not pass the this phase or will not launch it in the market. Compare it to the other commonly used treatment. Here the comparison studies also occur. So, we can take any molecule, drug molecule A and can compare with a placebo means a drug which have a psychological effect. Any other already marketed preparation can be taken. Any drug XYZ. So, like this there is a comparison study. If uh, the drug which is being tested, it is giving a more benefit over the other formulations, then only it will be launched. So, these studies can be performed in a blinded manner. There should not be any biasness. That is why we are performing the blinded studies. And we are evaluating the interactions here. Yes. What are the interactions? If we are taking the comorbid situation, comorbid patients, we are taking poly polypharmacy. Uh, we, uh, uh, the patient is undergone with a, uh, many of the drugs. So, at that time interactions could happen and we will evaluate the interactions with other treatments also that may be used at the same time as the investigational new drug is given. So, these all points will be, uh, these all information will be gathered from the phase 3 trials only. As the number of patients is more, though, so the information will be more better in this trial. After the phase number 3 trial, if a drug which is being tested and its benefits overweigh its risk, then it will pass in the or it will move for the phase 4 trial. In phase 4 trial, which is also called as a post marketing surveillance. Yes. In this study, what happened? See, here the drug is already march, uh, al al already launched for the market, but surveillance should be taken care. Means the monitoring of drugs in the market will take in care for many of the years and will try to find out if any side effects, if any toxicity happens even after taking it as a therapy, then the drug will withdraw. Yes. So, phase 4 trials are conducted after the drug or treatment has been approved for marketing. As I told you, 
continue testing the drugs and treatment to collect additional short term safety information any any side effects happen after taking the drug as a therapy or a treatment then of course the information will be taken care and the drug can withdraw from the market collect information about the uh, effect of the drug and treatment in various populations yes in various population means because uh, we we are giving it to the uh, country to country with different people geriatric pediatric yes so uh, so a wide uh, a wide range of people is covered here so from all this information i will decide as the drug is actually uh, continued for the treatment or it should withdraw another is the collect information about side effects associated with the long term i told you there are some of the toxicity which happens from many of the years after many of the years of treatment so this is also taken care here now this is the uh, summary chart this summary chart is here for the phase number 1 for the phase number 1 20 to 100 healthy volunteers are taken uh, taken as a participant dose finding is here safety pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic profile is taken care means the drug action and adme i told you in previous of the slides after this here the number of uh, volunteers are increased and these volunteers are patients so this is the basic difference here the healthy uh, volunteers here are the patients now in this we find efficacy and safety here we can see in the third phase number 3 trial the number of pa uh, patients increased so here the patients are in the thousands the efficacy and safety are being tested whereas for the fourth if this phase is passed of course there is the phase number 4 so for the phase number 4 i told you which is called as a marketing surveillance post marketing surveillance there is a uh, 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 there is a one procedure called as a regulatory submission and this after the reg regulatory submission which is approved by the fda and there is a phase number 4 trial drug is launched in the market and studies continues in the drug phase number 4 so this is the basic uh, a summary of the clinical trial phases now there is a concept of investigational new drug application what is investigational new drug application whenever any new drug is being tested there is concept of investigational new drug application this is called as application which is being filled while starting a phase number 1 trial so a sponsor means whosoever is funding a clinical trial a clinical research is called the sponsor if they wishes to conduct a clinical trial that involves any new drug must submit an investigational new drug application at the time the funding agency will fill this form and will submit to the fda yes and then fda will approve then there will be start of phase first yes so what what is the information are present in ind investigational new drug application the information are identity contact information of sponsor who is funding who is funding the clinical trial point number 2 a commitment that investigational review board means if any uh, study is being performed in any institution there is the approval by the investigational review board they will see the uh, uh, the study which is being performed what is the feasibility how the study is legal and then only irb will approve this study so the commitment that irb whatever the recommendation will be given by irb it should be followed so this report is also provided in the ind the name of the drug whatever the drug you want to test have to mention it a list of active ingredient what are the active ingredient what is the dosage which you are going to give to the patients what is the route of administration what are the objectives of studies of course if we want a new drug for any of the new disease it could be i'm just taking an example of hiv so we want a drug to be uh, uh, for the treatment of hiv what are the objectives of course to increase the quality of life of patient to treat the disease or uh, to uh, to decrease the duration of treatment like this these all are the objectives 
yes the objectives and plan duration of the proposed clinical trials because we have to uh, uh, you we have to go for the consent form patient consent form for that it is also one of the part which is needed the duration of the proposed uh, proposed clinical trial and also the sponsor will be fund the sponsor will give the money so uh, that's why uh, uh, duration is very important here another information which should be in the ind investigational new drug application it is signed investigator statement yes protocols what protocols you are going to follow what is the guidelines and applicable regulations then how will protect the rights safety and welfare of the trial participants how will do of course there is a concept of patient consent form which is submitted by the patient and also this is one point point number 1 and for the welfare of the trial uh, participants and the safety and the rights and all this there should be a proper pro protocol yes so these uh, points uh, should be taken care another obtaining informed consent form from the trial participants i told you so these two points are connected here then there is a proper record there should not be any biasness investigator will not uh, do any biasness for uh, not for any sake of any company for uh, not giving any information for the sake of any organization not for the sake of uh, the sponsors company so uh, it should be without of bias so for maintaining the proper records without any biasness it's very important furnishing all required progress reports progress reports at the time when the results are coming try to update it safety reports are there means how the drug is uh, giving effect what are the financial disclosure reports and there is a final report on the basis of it is passed by the fda complying with the institutional review board whatever the recommendation are given by the irb investigational review board it should be followed so what are the recommendations given by the investigational review board it is also being put while filing application another ensuring the proper handling of controlled substances means how you are going to uh, handle the new drug so labeling packaging everything should be written ensuring investigational procedure accountability i told you in previous of these slides also whatever the quantity received whatever uh, the amount is given to the patient how it is returned what are the discard procedures so it should be mentioned in the ind applications another another is necessary license should be there whosoever is performing like for the pharmacist for the physician what are the license are there it should be mentioned who is the principal investigator who are the co investigator investigator for the clinical trial or clinical research another ensuring that investigator product is being used in accordance with the appropriate protocol if 200 mg is given to the patient of course then it is written like 200 mg is given whatever the amount left how you are discarding explaining the correct use of investigational product to each participant and checking at interval so that you will get the side effect profile you will get the toxicity profile whatever the therapeutic efficacy is so it is all about investigational drug application i hope you will got uh, this uh, summary this all whole information thank you so much everyone we'll meet in the next session